Mariners segment of things. And uh, no, I'd say it's a good week. You know, it, it wasn't, they're not on a six game winning streak, but they've won five of their last six games. And that starts with this three game sweep, sweep of the Cincinnati Reds to close out their most recent homestand. That be that three game series began on April 15th versus the Reds, a nine to three victory. Our player of the game visited a hitter, Mitch Hanniger. Mitch, Two hits, two runs, three RBIs, and one walk on the day in this game. Also, as you can see with our player of the game here from our guy, Kevin, uh, outfield prospect, 10th uh, overall prospect in the Mariners organization, Jonathan Classe, uh, was able to get, well, he made his MLB debut. And not only that, he recorded his first MLB hit and his first MLB RBI. Uh, that came on an RBI single uh, in the sixth inning of this game. Just a really great win for the Mariners to go out there and be able to handle business against a Reds team that's dynamic, that's young, that's got a lot of fun talent on it, like Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, you know, a guy that's former Mariner Jake Fraley was able to do some damage in this series, but uh, the Mariners were able to take care of business the right way in game one, get the offense going. They were able to jump on Frankie Montas early in the game, you know, control the strike zone, all that sort of stuff. Take the smart approach, not swing it, make the better swing decisions, right? And then take advantage of the pitches that work in your favor. Game two of the series, April 16th versus the Reds, a three to one win. So a little bit tighter, not as much offense, but it's still a victory give them their first series win of the season. Our player of the game, starting pitcher Logan Gilbert, six and two thirds innings pitched for Walter, three hits, one earned run against, one walk and six strikeouts on the day. A tight one, uh, but a nice one for the Mariners. I believe the stat was that Logan Gilbert is 30 and 0 in his career when the Mariners give him three runs or more of run support. And they continued that. They did the bare minimum here in terms of that stat. But it does count, and they do get the win there. No photo of the game there, unfortunately. Our photographer for the night uh, had to call in sick. That's what happens. It's life. To close out the series on Wednesday, the getaway game, to close out the six-game homestand, and obviously that three-game series, the Mariners break out the brooms April 17th versus the Reds, a 5-1 to one victory. Our player of the game, catcher Cal Raleigh. Raleigh, one hit, one run, two RBIs, two walks on the day as well for the big dumper. Uh, his one hit, as you can see, was a solo homer as he's got the home run trident there in our photo of the game by Liz Walter. Nice way to close out the homestand there. You know, I mean, holding the Reds to just two, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, two runs over the last two games of the series, three in that first one. But, you know, even then, that's, that's pretty average. Can't really be mad at that. Uh, but to hold them the two runs over those last two games with how dynamic and young that offense is for the for Cincinnati is impressive, you know, and it shows you just how good this off this uh, the pitching staff is, whether it's the rotation to the bullpen. And then you think about the bullpen and not having guys like Matt Brash, like Gregory Santos, even a guy like Eduard Bazzardo. So uh, we move on from there. The Mariners headed out on the road to begin a six-game road trip, their second road trip of the season. Uh, began April 20th at the Rockies, was a 7 nothing win. It would have originally began on the 19th, Friday, April 19th, but that game got snowed out. So they had to play a doubleheader on Sunday, as you can see on your screen. That's why there are two dates, uh, two games on the 21st. April 20th, though, a 7 nothing win. This game wasn't clear without weather though, as there was snow throughout it, there was a ton of snow in the beginning that the grounds crew was able to remove, which is great to see, very nice, uh, and, and kudos to the Rockies uh, grounds crew in that regard. Um, but then throughout the course of this game, it, it was fine in the beginning, but then the snow did come down a little bit throughout it. And starting pitcher Luis Castillo, who is our player of the game, was rock solid throughout it. Ah, Piedra had his best start of the season after there was concern. I mean, there was a graphic showing uh, the different uh, degrees in which uh, Castillo made his starts in uh, by the temperature, right? And went in intervals of 10. And as it got colder, Castillo got worse and worse. And as it got hotter, he got better and better. Um, that didn't matter today. Seven innings pitched, two hits, no runs, one walk, and nine strikeouts in a snowstorm, really, really impressive stuff 
from Luis Castillo and a lot to be happy with in game one. So that pushes the win streak to four. Uh, April 21st, game one of that doubleheader, the Mariners would lose this one in extra innings, one to two. Our player of the game starting pitcher, George Kirby, five innings pitched, five hits allowed, no runs against, one walk and seven strikeouts. Five innings, five scoreless innings is pretty solid, but because he didn't get to the sixth inning, it snaps the Mariners' streak of quality starts at eight. Eh, whatever stat. Um, the Mariners offense, though, really couldn't get going. As you can see, just the one run. That one run did come in extra innings. Uh, J.P. Crawford hit a single to right field. Uh, and, and Andres Munoz struggling a little bit with control in the bottom of the 10th. And the Rockies are able to walk it off. There was some madness in this one. and looked like Jacob Stallings of the Colorado Rockies was going to hit a walk-off homer in the bottom of the ninth. But because a fan leaned over into the field of play and blocked Dylan Moore in left field from being able to complete a catch or even really make a complete attempt at a catch, um, it was taken back for fan interference, and the inning ended to send us into extras. So uh, game two of that doubleheader, which came about two hours after this first game wrapped up, uh, the Mariners win in pretty convincing fashion, I'd say, 10-2, to two, our player of the game, catcher Cal Raleigh. Raleigh, two hits, one run, and three RBIs on the day. Uh, it's a two-run homer for Cal in this one. Uh, for his second hit of the day, just a big one uh, to add on to this list. Everybody was contributing. Cal was actually, actually designated hitter in this game, so I apologize. Heavy Zavala was catching in this one. He had an impressive day, three hits on the day. He had one ball that was a fly out to left field that was all the way to the warning track. Uh, there was a lot of good things in this Rocky series, not so much in game two of the series, obviously, in that first game of the doubleheader. But, you know, anytime you look at six games, I think teams are going to be fine with taking five wins out of those six games in total. Talking about Cal, he is our player of the week. Um, over the last seven games, Cal's been hitting the ball really well. Uh, nine hits, four runs, three homers, seven RBIs, six walks as well. That's important. You know, you look at the hits and the homers. That's great. That's impressive. You'd like to see that. But, you know, getting on the bases as well, you know, creating traffic for your other hitters in the lineup to drive you in, that is important. Driving the, the, the pitch count up for the opposing pitcher, whether that's the starter or later into the games with the relievers as well, that's important. So that's, you know, another reason why when I was thinking about this player of the week, I was like, well, Cal makes a lot of sense. Let's go with him. A uh, 375 batting average, a 484 on base percentage, and then 750 slugging percentage as well. That's our player of the game. Player of the week, pardon me, Cal Raleigh. From our player of the game, we go into some injury related news here. We got some updates throughout the course. Uh, you know, in the past week, we talked about Class A last week and him being called up because of the Don Canzone injury. We found out on the 15th some more news about that. We didn't get a timeline set. Uh, specifically for Canzone, but we get to get some news on that. So he has an MRI on his left shoulder. There's no structural damage. It is that left AC joint. Uh, he won't need surgery, thankfully, but he will be out for at least a few weeks. So expect to see Class A around uh, for a decent bit of time. And, you know, with the way that he's played, truthfully, there's no reason to send him down, at least in this moment of time. Uh, if he struggles heavily when he starts to experience some better pitching than maybe, but at least for now, he's playing well. On the 21st, we heard some stuff uh, about some different pitchers. Uh, Right-handed pitcher Brian Wu pitched three scoreless innings of a rehab assignment with the Tacoma Rainiers, something that we heard about him potentially doing uh, at the beginning of the hope stand from general manager Justin Hollander. So no surprise there, but nice to see that it went well for Wu after he was dealing with some inflammation and there was some thought that that might be a long-term injury. Also reliever Matt Brash, We'll pitch one more time down in Peoria as he's trying to ramp back up. Uh, then his schedule for a rehab stint will be determined to best see how they can bring him back. Uh, regarding team-related news, on the 17th, infielder shot upfielder Sam Haggerty was reinstated from the 10-day injured list and option to AAA Tacoma. 29-year-old began the season on the 10-day IL with a medical procedure that has not been made clear to the media quite yet. Uh, he appeared in six games with Triple A Tacoma during his rehab assignment as he was batting 286 with two runs, one double, two stolen bases, three walks, and a 708 on base percentage plus slugging. 
He appeared in nine games during street ring training prior to that injury. So uh, again, it'd be really interesting to see if we ever find out what this procedure was. Uh, just unfortunate to know that, you know, it was something that held him out. And, and you know, it seems like for now, they're going to continue to get him at bats down in Tacoma uh, with the Rainiers. Uh, on the 21st, relief pitcher Cody Bolton was reinstated from the injured list. He served as the 27th player for the doubleheader that day. Uh, and then early into game two of that doubleheader, infielder Luis Urias left the game with a right wrist contusion. Post game, Scott Service said he should be fine by the time that the team gets to Texas. Um, and we haven't heard of that yet because the time that you're going to see this, uh, the Mariners had an off day on Monday, April 22nd. Uh, also on the 22nd, the team optioned right-handed pitcher Britt the Gusts Triple A Tacoma uh, following the game on April 21st. Uh, the 26-year-old righty reliever was selected from Tacoma back on April the 8th and was appeared uh, in four games, going uh, no wins, no losses, with a 2.70 ERA, recording no walks and two strikeouts. He appeared in three games with the Rainiers prior uh, to being called up by the big league club, recording one save in that span of time. So, you know, uh, looking at this past week for the Mariners, there's not a lot you can be super mad about. You know, it's nice to see them really getting into this approach that they talked about, you know, better swing decisions, taking advantage of the bad pitches that they do get, and really being able to drive them out. Um, you know, it's great to see that. It is against two teams that aren't necessarily marquee, though. And the next nine games that this team is going to have to play, uh, three against the Rangers, three against the Diamondbacks, and then three against the Atlanta Braves, Those, this is a, going to be a challenging stretch for the Mariners, their lineup, uh, not only their lineup, but also their pitching staff. Obviously, the Mariners have one of the best rotations in all of baseball, and they've got some great relievers right now as well, even without Brash um, and Santos at the moment. But, I mean, obviously we know what the Rangers can do with their lineup, and, and even some of those guys, knock on wood, uh, aren't hot quite yet. You know, you look at the Diamondbacks, they got to the World Series and played that Rangers team and, and, and provided some spark. Uh, and then the Braves, I mean, they've got one of the best lineups in all of baseball. So, it's, it's not going to be easy. You play the defending champs, the runners-up, and then the Braves, all in a span of nine games. It's not going to be easy, um, but it should be a good proving ground. You know, the Mariners struggled offensively to begin the season, uh, and, and their rotation really, aside of some sides from Bryce Miller and Logan Gilbert, really kind of struggled. Uh, and it seems like both sides are starting to pick themselves up and get into a groove of sorts. But like I said, it's going to be a great proving ground for them over the course of these next nine games. So uh, we look ahead to these next nine games. They begin on April 23rd, Tuesday, against the Rangers down in Texas is a 5.05 p.m. Pacific time start. April 24th against the Rangers is also a 5.05 p.m. Pacific time start. Uh, we continue to go over it here. April 25th at the Rangers, the final game of that series before the team will return home to Seattle is an 11.35 a.m. start. Uh, it should be a decent one for Seattle. I talk about, you know, the caution and how much of a proving ground this should be for the Mariners, but you'll have Logan Gilbert, Bryce Miller, and Luis Castillo all pitching in the series against the, the Rangers. So, I mean, you've got three of your best arms going. It's hard to complain about that. Then when the Mariners return home uh, to begin in the next homestand, homestand three out in the season, uh, starts with three games set against the Arizona Diamondbacks and a few familiar faces, excuse me. Uh, actually, I don't know if Paul C. I don't believe Paul Sewell will be on this trip. I think he just actually went down on a rehab assignment with the Reno Aces. Anyway, April 26th versus the Diamondbacks is a 6.40 p.m. first pitch that Friday. Um, it is the Mariners' turn ahead the clock a jersey night. Uh, April 27th versus the Diamondbacks, also a 6.40 p.m. start that Saturday. It's 90s night. Uh, the giveaway is a Mariners neon hat. And then April 28th versus the Diamondbacks is a 1.10 start. That is another little league day, and kids who, uh, upon leaving the ball game post game, uh, will receive a Cal Raleigh poster. So fun! All three games of that series against the Diamondbacks team uh, that, that went all the way to the World Series just last year. Hey Charles. Hey Jen. Hey, how about the Zamps? 
Oh, I'm excited. I know. Where are you going to watch all those away games, though? Away games? Huh. I was thinking of coming here since, after all, Rough and Tumble is the home of Circling Seattle Sports. I love that idea. Hope to see you all here.